So here's the idea behind inclusion exclusion. It is to abstract what we have just seen with very small examples and take, taking you back to probably middle school. If you have a set of objects, some universe, and suppose that for every I and one to N, you have a property, piece of I, some statement, so that for all X in your universe, this statement is either true or false. Let me give you a couple of examples. If your universe is, say, the integers from 1 to 100, and now I take the statement, n is even. That's a statement. It's a property. Now, if you pick up an integer in 1 to 100, either that statement is true or it's false. But there's no ambiguity. Uh, so I don't use a statement like n is my favorite number. Uh, uh, what does that mean? I, I want, but I want a statement that's unambiguous. So I want to, these are, that's the notion of a property or a statement. For every element in your universe, you have a statement which is unambiguous. And be careful with uh, English language. Uh, when you start saying, okay, my X is my set of students at Georgia Tech, and now my property is that the student is a first-year student. What, ooh, what, you know, what does first-year mean? Do you start in the summer? Uh, it gets a little bit gray. You, so you have to be very, very precise when you make your statement. If your universe is a set of Georgia Tech students, and you say they have been enrolled, for less equal 365 days. Okay, now, now it's beginning to, to be precise, and for every student, either that's a true statement or it's not a true statement. So these are the kinds of situations that we're talking about. We have a set of objects, and then we have a bunch of properties. Usually not one property, that's not very interesting. Usually a lot of properties. Okay, and so we want to get an inclusion-exclusion formula, and it's a trivial formula. The notation is n sub 0 is the number of elements in the universe that satisfy none of the properties. Now, we also write n of s with parentheses around the s, to be the objects which satisfy all the properties in the set S. All right, now, at the bottom, I write the formula, which is the formula that you two use to answer the first question. The number of elements in the universe that don't belong to either of the sets was the total minus the number that's in one, minus the number that's in two, and then put back in the number that's in both. Ooh, there's a typo. Uh, there's an obvious typo in this uh, slide. You see it, the bottom line is supposed to be plus N12. Is that clear? Apologies about that. Plus N12. Uh, PowerPoint. Okay. All right. Now, uh, I write at the bottom, hopefully, the correct formula when there are three properties. We didn't actually complete the exercise when the universe size had, was 2,307, but had we, then the number that satisfies none of the three properties would be n of empty set. Now, n of empty set, you have to satisfy all the properties in the empty set. All right, so the set of objects which satisfy all the properties in the empty set is everybody. Because if you say otherwise, you have to show me a property that it fails to satisfy, and there are none. So vacuously, all the objects satisfy the empty set. So the total minus n1, minus n2, minus n3, 
plus n12, plus n13, plus n23, minus n23. So inclusion, exclusion is just simply overcount it, undercount it. Take it, put it in, take it back out. Put it in, take it out. Until, until you get to the point where you have correctly accounted for everything. There's nothing deep about this formula at all. It is simply a formal expression of the kinds of logic and reasoning that you used back in middle school, but made a bit more formal. Okay. Do you understand the formula? Now, would you like to apply this formula when there are a thousand properties? No. How many terms are there in this formula? If there are n properties, there are two to the n terms. Uh, here, there are three properties, and there's one plus three plus three plus one. That's the uh, num that's those are the binomial coefficients, and the total is two to the three, which is eight. There are eight terms. When there are a thousand properties, there will be two to the thousand properties, and nobody, not even a computer, wants to do two to the thousand. So if this thing is going to be useful, we're going to have to get rid of this phenomenon. Here's the n is 4. There are 16 terms. I didn't write n equals 5. But in general, they're 2 to the n. And how can this possibly be of use? All right, so now let's back up to this. Look at this term right here. How could it possibly be simple to apply a formula that has this many terms in it? Well, here's one thing that might happen. What happens if all the terms in this formula on any one row are constant? All right, n0, well, there's only one term. That's a constant. Look, n1, n2, n3, and n4, those are four terms, but what happens if they're all the same term? So then you get minus four times something. What happens if all the terms on the next row are all the same? How many terms are on the second row? Six, but six is four choose two. So if all those terms are the same, then you just add... Six times something. And again, if all the ones on the next term are the same, you subtract four times something. Now, I'm not saying that all the terms, every term is the same. I'm just saying all the terms on any one row are the same. So if that happens, this formula is going to get more simple. Okay. So our first two examples of applications of inclusion and exclusion are going to have that property. What's going to happen is that the formula is going to collapse, and it's going to collapse because all the terms on any one row are the same. All right, let's put that into practice. 